are going to talk about line in line surface and volume integrals means line integrals, surface integrals and volume integrals. Please be sure that this part is of tremendous importance in the physical sciences and tremendous importance in the engineering sciences. You just cannot do without what we are now discussing. So, essentially we are going to stick to what is a three dimensional space. We have been only talking about two dimensional spaces for essentially function of two variables. So, but if you look at the uh, place we live in, we always are aware of length, breadth and height. So, basically we are aware of three numbers length, breadth and height. So, basically in a three dimensional space any number, any, any point can be expressed by its length, breadth and height which is the which is called the coordinate of the point and it is given by three real numbers say x, y and z. And so, this is the x axis, the y axis and the z axis. So, any if I connect it with the origin O, of course, we have to fix our axis, coordinate axis, the reference frame with some origin O which can be arbitrarily chosen. And the di this one, this distance is computed just by using Pythagoras theorem. And just like in the two dimensional case, the distance from 0 is just this quantity. Now, if you look at this point x, y, z, if I have a point x, y, z here, it has one direction, if this is the origin. So, if I take the origin at some point and if I take a point here, it gives me x, y, z and then if I take a point here, it gives me another x, y, x 1, y 1, z 1. So, these two things have, if they may, might be of same distance from the origin, but are different objects because they are in pointing in different directions and these objects which has both direction and magnitude is called a vector. So, this is of great importance that we uh, note this fact. So, here along the x axis, y axis and z axis, we consider three vectors which, of, which are of length 1 of distance 1 from the origin. Along x axis, I consider the i vector along y axis I considered the j vector, along z axis I considered the k vector. Then any vector which I now denote as r vector, so this could be denoted as r 1 vector, this r vector can be always written as in terms of the coordinates x i plus y j plus z k. Those who know some linear algebra would immediately recognize that i j k are nothing but the canonical basis vectors. So, but let us talk in terms the talk in the way physicists would actually talk about. And in this, uh, so here we call mod r the distance uh, vectors. Here among the vectors, I would have some important way of looking at things there are certain important operators which I will again go to the board and do which will be much better. For example, if I take function of some r vector, it could be say some function of x into i vector, some function of y or maybe x, y, z does not matter x, y, z into i vector, some function phi 1 and phi 2 x, y, z of j vector. So, if you look at the vectorial part, this is nothing but a scalar composition of a vector. So, you can always write a vector in this form, because the length of this would be exactly this x square plus y square plus z square root. So, many of you possibly know this way of writing or many of you have studied physics. So, I am assuming that you have this basic knowledge that I can always write a vector in this form that I scalar multiply the vector i with this vector j with this and vector j with k and then I make a vector addition it will give me this vector, the vector r. So, I can have I can you can also write the thing in this uh, particular fashion right. Now, if I have a function of three variables, so this is a function, these are these sort of functions pretty often come up. Suppose I just have a function of three variables, so 
and then there is the important operation called the gradient operation which is nothing but a vector collecting all the partial derivatives. So, this is nothing but a collection of a partial derivatives sorry del phi. So, we will be only concerned you can also extend it to n, n variables, but we will be concerned only with 3 variables. Why I am writing this because you are already aware of this for 2 variables, but so I am doing this to uh, make you aware of, of that we can make an extension to 3 and more, but we will be just concerned with 3 here. There is a very important operation that given a vector v right, there is an operation called this, this is the grad, grad operator which is called also call it the nabla operator and this is the divergence operator how do i do it so just like the vector function v it is possibly a function of xyz so any if at any point in xyz i can have a vector function like this basically this is r vector is basically x y z f of x y z is this then this represents a vector field this is what is called a vector field. So, v vector is written as v 1 i vector v 2 and these are scalar v 2 j vector and v 3 k vector. So, the divergence operator is often written as del del x del del x del del y del del z this is usually written as divergence means from a point let, let say a light source how the light is diverging in all directions. So, that is the that is the physical meaning or trying to uh, look at a spread of a physical quantity from a given point. So, this so divergence actually now is can be written in the following way basically we are looking at the dot product of two vectors dot product is some and we do, do the operation like this. So, this vector this so these are some quantities these are components the coordinates of a vector. So, that can be also written as del del x i plus del del y j del del z k and this you take an inner product dot product with uh, this part v, uh, v 1 i vector v 2 j vector v 3 k vector v 1 v 2 v 3 all these can all be functions of x y z. So, finally, what you land up is you multiply take d d x of v 1 d d y of v 2 d d z of v 3. So, del dot v del dot v finally, becomes a scalar which is del v 1 del x plus del v 2 del y plus del v 3 del z. Similarly, you can talk about another operation called the curl operation. So, curl operation is like putting a screw uh, so, basically you have 2 vectors a and b. So, basically this is the base of a screw and you are now trying to trying to rotate this screw you are trying to rotate the screw from a to b in this direction. So, then the screw would actually get inside a wall for example, there is a screw and if you want to rotate the screw here it will get inside the wall. So, the vector the movement of the vector is along this direction this gives me what is called the a cross b that is called the cross product. So, the curl operation is based on the cross product. So, it is the same operator del del operator is this operator del del x del 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 z. So, physicists are always using this theoretical physicists are always using this operator. mathematician would not like this sort of symbolisms because uh, this does not mean anything for mathematician, but for physicist it has a lot of meaning it is a del operator, but because you, you can play a lot of games with this. So, and, and you get uh, you can 
get conclusions about physical things. So, it is very important. So, call our vector v, what does it mean? So, this is defined as follows i j k again it do not make sense to mathematicians, because you are talking about a determinant and you are talking about matrices in you are talking about basically uh, vectors in them i vector j vector k vector del del x del del y and del del z, but it is no not ha, no harm if you think like a physicist. Now, you obviously calculate the things out. So, now if you look at this then this vector the v vector I should maybe put putting an arrow if I am trying to behave like a physicist then this is what this is nothing but i into this this minus this. So, you will have i vector or rather I should put uh, this first del 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 y of v 3 minus del del z of v 2 del del v 3 del y minus del del z of del del z of v 2 this into i vector. So, it is a vector. So, the curl operation gives a vector, grad operation of the gives a vector only the divergence the divergence operation sometimes written as div v this gives you a scalar. Now, you, you have to take this and this. So, it becomes del del x of v 3 minus it is just taking a determinant in the standard way, but it is really not taking a determinant. You can write it in the form of determinant, but this is actually the definition the cyclical movement of the vectors del v 1 del z z vector j vector plus del del x v 2 minus del del y v 1 k vector. This is actually the definition of curl, but physicists have invented this shorthand of writing this whole thing in the standard form of determinant, but obviously mathematicians would not really like this sort of things. Yeah, yeah sir. So, it is like a standard taking of determinant. So, it is like a scalar 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1. So, once this is done, you can actually compute out these sort of things, these objects. Now, once we have these ideas in mind, you can compute out very simple examples of this. This is just too simple for me to waste time on at this moment, because we have, we are, we always run short of time. So, we are going to introduce what is called the line integral. And then, we are going to talk about the volume integral and the surface integral and the volume integral. So, what about a line integral? So, basically, you line integral is nothing, but you want to integrate a vector over a line in a space say starts from a point A and this line goes to point B. So, you can break this line up into small partitioning, integral is all about partitioning constructing and taking this damn stuff over those small partitions and then moving on and summing up. So, this, this is elemental interval which I call del L. Uh, d l it is it is the line uh, line element. So, basically I am looking at the integral v dot d l from point A to point B right. So, this is what I am really trying to figure out. Now, suppose I am in a situation where I am talking about so v dot d l. So, d l now essentially consists of what? You, so, this is the line element and basically this is nothing but is a piece of an arc. So, if it is x, y and z, you know how do you write the piece of that arc. So, each length is basically this is nothing but d x square plus d y square plus d z square square root. So, you take one of them out and then you keep the rest. 
So, we will just show you by an example how to calculate this, but if you are trying to now consider a path which is closed like this and trying to take an integral from this end to this end, if it, if it is over a closed path, right, then you are over the closed path, you essentially you are talking about line integral in this form. Then we put a circle here to say that we are moving over a closed path, but the moving over a closed path does not always give you integral 0. So, what if you look at d l vector, what is the d l vector, the length vector? Look at d l. So, what, what it has? It has this small length has three components. So, there was some x, y, z and then you have made a little change to x plus del x, y plus del y and z plus del x. So, this was x, y, z coordinate and then you have changed over to x plus del x, y plus del y z plus del z that sort of thing. So, basically when these are very small del, del x is d x del, del y is d y del z is d z. So, basically you know that the differential is nothing but for the independent variables nothing but the, the very little change that you make of the variable. So, what does d l consist of then d l actually is d x of i vector d y of j vector d z of k vector and that is exactly v is actually v d x plus v 1 d x plus v 2 d y plus. So, it this whole thing is actually v 1 d x plus v 2 d y plus v 3 d z that is exactly it. So, let me just uh, work out an example here. So, let me now consider one example. So, let v vector be given as y square i vector 2 x into y plus 1. You see it can be functions of x, y, z or just x, just y, whatever you want. So, I, I do, did not have anything say. So, this is in two dimensions just for fast uh, introduction. So, now I want to take, so I can put 0 into k vector. So, this is just essentially a two dimensional stuff, but if you look at it in three dimension, you can actually go in three dimensions also. Basic, basically, then let me talk about the two points that I am choosing A and B. So, A is 1 1 0, say something like 1 and 1 and 0. So, this is the point 1 1 0. From here, I want to go to 2 2 0 this point. So, essentially it is the two dimensional stuff the vector is essentially a two dimensional vector, but you can look at it from a three dimensional perspective also does not matter. So, b is 2 to 0. So, you see, so here I have written a to b, a to b actually means basically you have to integrate, but putting the proper limits on x and y. So, then here what would happen? Here I would have now, uh, suppose we want to move along this bold green path. So, we want to go from 1 1 0 to 2 2 0 on this path. So, we are instead of I am looking at the three dimensional thing in this two dimensional picture. Now, along this, so d l is this one which we have already also written there. So, along this path, I from first move from x equal to 1 to x equal to 2. And I do not, so I do not make any change in the levels of y and z. So, this is the first part of the path, this is the second part of the path. So, in path part 1 of the path, d y is 0 and d z is 0, there is no change in x and y. So, basically I have the d x part. So, basically integral v dot d l, so d x is changing from 1 to 2 is 1 to 2. So, x square d l. So, v dot d l is y square d x. So, what is y here? So, y has maintained the value 1, it has not changed. You see y is all y is in the is, we are changing horizontally. So, there is no change in the y value. So, between x is changing from 1 to 2, y remains to take the value 1. So, basically it becomes 1 to 2 
d x. So, this becomes 1. Now, we go from the point this same if I make it a b c, I have come now from a to b and now I have to go up to c. So, if I have to do that, let me do the calculation here on this same page, so that you do not lose the track. So, here I am changing only y, I am not changing z, I am not changing x. So, on my d z is 0 and my d x is 0. So, my d l is d y z vector. So, what does this mean? What is my v dot d l? But along this path, what is the value of x? That see, you, you know this. So, my v dot d l, so my integral v dot d l, this will be integral what is, what was my uh, second part 2 x into y plus 1. So, y is now changing from 1 to 2 into d y, but what was my x? x was x is held at 2. So, when y is changing from 1 to 2, my x value is 2. So, basically I will put 1 to 2 4 into y plus 1 d y and this will give me the value 10. So, finally, I will add these two things. So, to write that my integral a to b a is 1 1 0 b is 2 2 0 this is 11. The question is what will happen if I take it from point a to point c you can try out by doing so from point a to point c you observe that only z does not change but x and y both changes right. So, basically you have to write it in this format. So, d l so d l would be exactly the, the same way we have written. So, if I go from now I, I want to go from on the straight path. So, from 1 1 0 to 2 2 0. So, here observe what is the important thing. The important thing to observe here that is that x is equal to y and the second thing is to observe that dz is equal to 0. So, my integral v d l will have, so is we have to go from basically I can put d x equal to d y here. So, in this case my v dot d l I will put y square d l is d x, d z is 0 plus the next part is 2 x y plus 1 and I will put the value here as d y, but d y is equal to d x because x is equal to y. So, x is equal to y this will become x square d x plus same going from 1 to 2 going from 1 to 2 here I will put x 2 x into x plus 1 d x. So, if you evaluate this you will get finally, the answer 10. So, so the message there is that if you move from 1 1 0 to 2 2 0 along the path 1 we get the line integral to be 11, but if we move along path 2 we get the line integral will to be 10. Uh, so, but the there are certain cases where the line integral does not depend on the path on which you integrate they only depend on the end points that sort of vector fields where it happens is called said to be a conservative vector field and it is of prime importance in uh, physics for example, gravitational field is a conservative vector field. Now, we are going to talk about surface integrals and volume integrals. So, surface integral is that okay, you have a surface and over which you want to do the same sort of integration. So, if you have a surface like this, then d a is a small area, the elemental area, right. So, this is the elemental area on the surface S and the surface area, if you want to express the area as a vector 
it is a vector pointing outward from the surface. This is the d a vector and this is the magnitude of the vector, this is the, DA, this is the surface, the whole surface. So, of course, there is little bit of ambiguity about which way is the outer one, which way is the inner one. If the surface is like this, I can say, well, okay, I can think that way as outer one. But usually, there is an understanding that, okay, for example, if the surface is a closed surface, then you can understand what is the interior and you know what is the exterior. So, anything which is pointing toward the exterior is the one, is the direction of the elemental area. So, for example, you can we will just uh, take an example here. So, you take an example of v vector Now, I want to take it out on a cube, I want to find the integral of this on a cube on the surface integral, a cube which is of length, breadth and height 2. So, in the next class, we will first start by computing this one. Once we start by computing this one, we will then go over to volume integral, show you how to compute and mention several important theorems using these integrals and that will be the end of the course. So, it is the same game. Here, you know the, if you take an elemental area, you first you, you take one area by one surface by another. I want it over the whole surface. So, you take the six surfaces. So, the elemental areas are like this. Suppose I want it, uh, I do not take 6 sides, I take it over 5 sides, okay. I'll, I forget the bottom. I will take it over say this side, this side, this side, this side and the other side outer. So, this is how I think about the elemental area. I know what is, what, what which is the inside of this cube and what is the, which is the one, which is for which part of the cube is the outside one. So, so if I know this, I can easily draw out the, you can also take the sixth one, you can go, the outward curve would be like this, but okay, you can just do it for the five, five, five ones. So, try them out. So, here what is, what is the area, an elemental area, if a small elemental area here for the, the, kick, the, the very far one facing us, the very far one facing us, the elemental area is dx dy, uh, dy dz, because essentially it is the change you are looking the length and breadth is length is y and uh, the breadth is y and the length is z. So, it is d y d z into x into i vector, the i vector is here. So, it is the vector along the i vector along the x axis. So, you have to just find the elemental areas like this and just, just go on doing it step by step that is all. Here you have to you have to have a double integral because you will have in terms of d z d y dx dy dz dx and all those things. So, we will just try to do the calculation very fast in the next class and go to volume integral, do a calculation, mention the theorems of Stokes, Green and Gauss and with that we will end. We would not have time to really go through doing examples, then we need much more classes to finish it. So, we will just end it here. Thank you.